Hello guys, uh, welcome back to another video. And today we're gonna to talk about how to get over the hump of reading classical literature. So I haven't talked much yet about reading on this channel. Um, but I do think it's an important part of self-improvement if you're in certain, but well, it depends where you wanna get out of self-improvement. But if you wanna increase your richness of life uh, or your knowledge, then I think reading's very key. Some people disagree. Some people say it's, it's all experience. Um, but the vast majority of, of successful people um, dedicate, like put down a lot of their success to reading. So um, it's something worth taking seriously. And if you wanna get good at reading, then the, the secret is just to do it every day, basically. That's, that's what I currently do. Um, but I'm going to be talking today more about so classical literature. So this is less about entrepreneurial success and more about um, more about kind of just increasing the richness of life. Because I think a lot of life's lessons are best, you know, life's experiences are, are at their richest if you look at them through the eyes of um, the great writers. You know, um, so you know this might sound like bullshit, but um, but I do I do think it's worth reading some of the, some great literature. You know, not just sort of informational, inf sort of informative non-fiction books about self-improvement, which is key as well. I think if you want to live a great life, I've, I've got a big stack of books I'm going to need to read uh, at some point. But um, but if you just want to read like great literature, so. Big thing for me, I think, is because I've had this experience recently with a lot of books that I've read on my course. Is I've heard a lot about them, and in my mind, I've been like, "This is a really good book. I can't wait to read it." Um, I know, I know, I'm going to love it. You know, like the, the Odyssey, the Iliad. You know, these amazing books that you hear about. Um, you know, people have told you stories about it when you're a kid. But the experiences I've had with a lot of these big books. Uh, like the Odyssey or the Iliad, the Aeneid, is when I've actually sat down to read them, um, as it's, you know, it's gone from just talking about these stories anecdotally to actually sitting down and reading them cover to cover, I've actually been very disappointed because I've been like, this isn't as fun as I thought it would be. This is actually quite a boring book. Um, you know, like, why is this so uh, successful? Like, why has this been... Um, written for so long, for so many years, uh, copied down so many years to, until today. You know, I don't really see what the big fuss is about, um, because the writing style is so so sort of particular, and um, you know, it's just what I want to say is if you have that experience with with classical literature, it's quite a, quite a nasty feeling because you, you feel really apathetical towards your your tastes, I guess, you know, you feel like there's a gap between you and the great literature of the world. Um, but I want to say that you can recover from that. But there are a few steps in mind, just to bear in mind, that you have to go through. So anyway, the first thing to bear in mind is you've got to understand what context a lot of these books were written in. And there was a kind of necessity for these books to be really rich in a way that modern books aren't, don't need to be necessarily. Um, really they're rich in different areas. So I'll take the example of Greek poetry, like ancient poetry, because I think that's a really key one. Uh, but this broadly can apply to other things as well. So the example of books like the Odyssey and the Iliad, if, you, if you're reading them and you're not getting like the kind of, it all seems a bit just really dense and you don't really understand it. You gotta remember that the way these poems were, were performed, back in the day, is a lot of the time they'd be taking very small chunks of it and singing it, um, you know, as a performance. So obviously you'd have copies of the entire books, the, the, the entire work that was written down into scrolls and stuff, but the sort of way it was performed was in chunks, right? And another, another thing that's probably worth pointing out is um, these, these poems are divided into books, and so you'd have book one, book two, book three. I think these are kind of synonymous to chapters. But for the old, 
you know, if they're ancient Greece and Rome, that they were literally books because the word book was just a, the same as the word for a scroll, right? So you'd have scroll, it would just be a scroll of, of, the, of the poem. So the point I'm guessing at here is that the magnifying glass is very, it's just very rich. It's very rich. For something to be so rich in meaning that you could take, you know, a hundred lines from the poem and perform that in a, in a song at a, at a banquet or something. Um, and for that to be good, you know, for, for that little extract to be enjoyed on its own is, is quite something. And I think it's difficult to really digest all of the meaning from just one read of it. So, so understanding that can, can, can explain why it's difficult to instantly connect to these, these books, you know, for, um, it took a very long time for people to, people will be hearing these, these, these books, these, these poems all the time and it would be really drilled into you. Um, so it, it takes a while to get properly digested is what I'm getting at. Um, and so, um, so in terms of how this, what this means for your strategy for learning it, I think, uh, patience is the only, is the name of the game really. <clears throat> and just go full circle on what I was saying earlier. You just have to make sure you're reading whatever every day and maybe you read it the first time and it doesn't make sense or you don't really get what it's about um it doesn't matter it doesn't matter um just pick up another book you want to read and start on that and if you're reading books of the same genre let's say you're reading the example i've been using epic poetry you know uh start with one book uh, go to you know start with the Iliads, finish that. Don't don't worry about if you enjoyed it or not. Just move on to the Odyssey, uh, and move on to the Agnostica, and then slowly kind of build up an understanding of the genre. Maybe go back to the Iliads, reread it. it makes a bit more sense this time. Um, and this can take a very long time because they're extremely long books. Um, but that's how I'd recommend going about it. And. Yeah, it's a long haul, basically. It's a long haul. Um, but it's, it's infinitely worth it as well, for reasons I've described. So I hope that helped, guys, and um, see you soon.